Hey, Facebook. We're getting ready to start our live with Apostle Jenkins. <laughs> God bless you, Daryl. We're just starting off. Just, just bear with us for a second. Hello, Cassandra. How are you? God bless you. We're just waiting for Apostle to come on. But in the meantime, um, we just want to make everyone aware that we're getting ready to have Apostle Jenkins come on. Um, we just recently met, so I'm just excited about what God is going to do through the teaching and the revelation of Apostle Jenkins regarding the movie The Matrix, talking about how to unveil what the movie represents and the symbolism of our today walk with Christ, as well as the spirit realm. So we're just looking for um, that introduction for him to come in. So just bear with us for a second. God bless you. Um, hi, Izzy. How are you? God bless you. I'm waiting for the man of God to come, and then we're going to bring him in shortly. So in the meantime, um, you know, we want to just say that a lot of times movies depict reality and especially when it comes to the sci-fi um, movies and in the way that it's written. It's really written in a sense that it's not just fantasy. It's, it's coming from a specific space and place. So really want to keep our spiritual eyes open and our ears open to what God is saying in regards to some of these written films. Um, and uh, so... Just sit back, relax, invite some people. Please share this this um, live with someone so that God can really get the glory and that a lot of revelation will be coming and we'll begin to understand a lot of the kingdom knowledge that's wrapped up in the apostolic and the prophetic. Amen. So just give us one minute while we um, wait for the man of God. Just bear with me one minute. I'm going to see if I can invite him in. I want to see. So I sent him his invitation. Um, so we're just waiting for him to come in. <laughs> God bless you. How are you, man of God? Good, good. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing awesome. I'm doing awesome. I'm so excited for um, what God is going to reveal through you. And I know that you're loaded with revelation and insight. And, and I have kind of tuned into a lot of your teachings and a lot of, of your prayers um, as they were going forth. People were sending them to me. And I wow. have just recently really started to pay attention. But a lot of times I kind of get in my own uh, I have a lot of things going on, so I don't really do a lot of watching of other lives. Um, okay. So that's kind of the limitation for me because as a writer, <laughs> I do a lot of research. So it's a very, okay. you know, uh, yeah. a lot of things that goes on. But I want to kind of stay tuned with you. I know that you wrote a book, and that was recently alive in regards to that. Can you tell us a little bit about that book that you wrote? Well, the, the book is called The Journey of False Perceptions. Uh -huh. It's about 40 years of my life. Uh, from the, well, really, maybe more, but from the time I came out of my mother's womb, uh, uh, probably up to now, and it deals with all the hate and perceptions that I had of my father, church, and how that journey of false perception and how things shape you and all my experiences. So I talk a lot about uh, people who may have been wounded, molested, raped, ostracized, and how those pains shape your perception of life. And how you have to know how to come out of that journey of false perceptions and to see through the lens of love and see through the lens of God. If not, the very thing you experience will become true, but not become the truth. And it's a difference, it's a difference between what is true to you based on your experiences, based yes. upon what is truth to God, based upon what he knows. So I talked about how I didn't have, I hated my father and I felt like he wasn't in my life and that was true to me. But it wasn't the truth. I had never been without a father. And so my pain had shaped me. So I talked about coming out of those false perceptions uh, of the whole journey of them and how to be delivered from things that shape you. Like when David said, I was born in sin, but then he yeah. said, I was shaped in iniquity. Yeah. And the yeah. iniquity is what shaped us. And so there's perceptions that shapes us. 
And so I talked about how to come out of those things. So that whole book, it's a powerful book, but it has a lot of blood and tears in it. <laughs> I can't wait to read. I'm going to be one of the ones that's going to read it because I want to bring you back so we can talk about that. But for today, we're going to be talking about The Matrix. And I, I kind of been posting. I started a new group, and I was so happy that Prophet Summers actually reached out and, and wanted you to speak on this because this actually was something that I was saying, clearly, God, there must be other people out there that you're speaking to about the revelation of a lot of these types of films. And um, I know that you have so much to, to teach us on. So I'm kind of going to give you some questions, but I also want you to kind of like freely flow. I don't okay. want to mess up your flow with the Holy okay. Spirit to be saying with you. Um, okay. One of the things that I, when I was re-watching this movie, I wanted to kind of tap, tap in, into some of the things that um, I was paying attention really hard um, from the very beginning of the movie where it even, it talks about, the first thing I want to talk about is the agent. Okay. Let's talk about the agents. Okay. Well, you know, it's three agents, uh, and they wear dark sunglasses. So I believe that's symbolic of that they see everything through the program or the or the system of darkness. So that's very key. Uh, I think the movie twisted a little bit. We understand that there are three agents that fight against us. That's the yes, false sir. prophet, Antichrist, and Jezebel. Mm -hmm. But in that yeah. movie, they don't include the women. They have three men which I think okay. is very key to the system of darkness to go after who's carried the seed. And so there's a system that's going after the men that carry the seed. So I think that's very key. These agents are so powerful because they have the ability to uh, come into anybody who's not disconnected, which is very key. And even like a program like this and a ministry like this, if people are not unplugged, the enemy will come in while we're teaching and preaching and cause them to have a false perception of what we're saying and miss it. And so this is the number one thing that the agents are doing. They're actually cloning people to be able to keep them in, in a system of control. And so I thought that was very powerful with them and that they have that ability and that they have an earpiece and they're connected. They're unified. They're one. But one of the things that they do, they are targeting the people that has been designed to come out the matrix. So they're looking mm. for you. And so yes. they, they said to Neil, we've been watching you. And so that's yes. very key. Another point, they, yeah, another point that they say to Neil is that they never refer to him as Neil. They only call him Mr. Anderson. They will never acknowledge his spiritual mm. name. Neil is his spiritual name. Neil spelled backwards is the word one. Morpheus keeps saying you are the one. But Neil yeah. was his name. But they never refer to him as Neil. Even though they know that he's Neil, they tell him when they have this conference with him that there are two names that you go by. One is Neil and one is Mr. Anderson. But they try to negotiate with him that if you stick with Mr. Anderson and turn in Morpheus, yes. it will let you go about your business. And that's the negotiation that the system of the enemy is making with us, that we never become who God called us to become. That we will always accept our name that's been given by religion or by the world, but never come to an acknowledgement of who you are in the spiritual as Neil. And so the, so the humanity will never, ever agree with your spirituality. You have to uh -huh. make make it be under suggestion because they'd never do that. And so a lot of times we look for justification from our from our Mr. Anderson and it only comes from the enemy. Only the enemy will make you feel about being good about Mr. Anderson. You must know that you are Neil. You must know that you are the one. You must know that you're the seed of Abraham. And so that's a very key point in how they work. They also, they understood the power of those that are free. Uh, when the police officer goes to get Trinity from the very beginning, they uh -huh. say, no, your men already did already. They understand that the, the element of people who are free have the ability to, to supersede people who are not free. And so they know that. They understand the talents and the gifts. And so that's another key. That the enemy is not uh, dumb or ignorant concerning our, right. anointing, our, our power in God, mm -hmm. our authority. He understands. He hoping that we never get free to use it against him. So that's another key point. There's many points when it comes to uh, those. I know we're gonna, <laughs> we're definitely gonna have to do uh, more lives according to your schedule. You know that's why I was asking you in the beginning is if we could just do you know one and, and kind of focus on because they're long movies, right? They're, right. they're full of, of insight and revelation. Right. If God will begin to train your eyes to see what right. you're looking at that's in it. the movie. I also want to kind of comment about how the agents in the beginning um, are linked to the legal system. They are linked to the government system right. and how right. prevalent that they're working side by side and intertwined, right? Very and much. and that, that was one thing that I, I kind of wanted to talk about as well, because that's the new world order system is to work right. together 
and kind right. of get rid of and diffuse the light that's in the world. Those who are free, we got to get rid of these people because they're they're a problem for us, right? Very much so. <laughs> and much so, so. Um, I want to ask you this: Is that let me put a, let me put a pin movie, right? He put a pin right there because that's a, you said something powerful. That's that's the scary part because if we if we really believe that, which that is true, that they're connected to the world and the government system. That includes our health care, that includes our hospitals, that includes our school, that includes our entertainment, that includes our TV set, that includes our style, our culture, that includes yeah. everything. And so there's a lot of things that the church has embraced that they don't realize that the world controls it. And I don't care yeah. how much you dream to be famous or to be popular in that world, that world is tied to the matrix, you see? Yeah. And so it's going to take abandonment and what I call yeah. radical abandonment to not be huh. tied to the matrix. Radical abandonment, right. because most of the time, everything that we dream and want, even in God, is connected to their world. It's yes. connected to their world. And they would negotiate to give us that. It's almost like when Lucifer said to Jesus, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world if you bow down and worship me. That was, the, that was the enemy. And so that's very key that you said that, because most of the things that we still want in God, we don't understand the compromise we would have to do, because he is the prince of this world. And that means everything. Which goes back to we gotta start establishing the, the, the city of Zion, which that's in the movie too. The, the, yes. the city of Zion. And <laughs> it has to be a city is, that is designed for people that are free that don't have to bow down to the system of this world. You see, and that was the real purpose of the church, and we didn't miss that altogether. But that's another My point. God. You had a question. <laughs> um, I did have, <laughs> I did have a question, but again, like I said, as God has you to flow, please flow. Um, I'm, I'm looking at my notes here. Um, now I, I wanted you to talk about the, the way that they were able to go into the system using the telephone, using right. the internet, right? Because right. that's the, uh, that's kind of like another form and fashion of, um, connecting. Right. Oh, very much so. so. I, wanted, I wanted to get your 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 um. I want you to talk about how they always use the phone and how the internet or their computer system, the technology, right? right. The technology of the new age and, right. and how that inf how that infiltrates our um our walk with God or how that pans out. Wow. Well, that's like real heavy because you know, in in God we believe faith come by hearing, which is the ear. Right, yeah. the telephone is designed for the ear. Very important of what we hear, and then we're dealing with frequencies, which is so important in Christianity because uh -huh. you have to understand worship is about frequencies. Yes, uh, even Lucifer himself is about frequencies. For him to be the worshiper in heaven before he comes the devil, he understands frequency. He also understands energy and how to communicate. The technology is so heavy because it allows us to get to a place. Uh, let's say. It, it expands our understanding of time. There's no way in the world I should be able to talk to you and you hear what I'm saying in a matter of seconds and you somewhere far from me. This is what should happen by faith in the spirit. The yeah. enemy has learned how to develop the same system or close to it that we should know by faith or by word of knowledge through technology. It is the way he has connected all of us like we're able to be connected, like the internet. Christ told us to let down our nets. Now we have, yeah, the internet, we have another <laughs> net that's been developed by the devil that's duplicating what God told us, okay? Real yeah. talk. And so that communication. So they understood that the only way I can transport you out of the matrix into freedom is through a form of communication, which is yeah. essential because it goes yeah. back. If we deal from the Christian side, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one spirit, many gifts, but the same spirit. And so yeah. in the natural world, the internet is being what we call spiritual in the spiritual world. It's connecting everybody. It doesn't matter what color you are. Everybody can get on the internet and connect. It's connecting That's right. people. And so it's so deep when you study, and I do a lot of studying like you, a lot of research. When you study uh, Steve Jobs, who came up with the iPhone, uh, he said that he got a revelation from God. And God told him to put an I in front of everything that he made. And when the I am is in front, Watch this, that it will work and be successful. Even though we know that that's not necessarily claiming Christ, but that principle that's right. is absolutely, that principle is the I, is the communication. And so even in the movie, they talk about artificial intelligence. Ah, which, is the is, which is the iPhone, the iPhone 10, the iPhone, and it's going to keep going on and on because it has the I in front of it, which connects everybody by that one spirit. Because all of us come from God. Everything comes out of God, so it's the I. And so that communication is so important 
to understand how we communicate. The problem is, are we are we using that communication to stay in the matrix, or are we using that communication to come out of the matrix? That's See, right. Trinity and Morpheus, they use it to come out of the matrix and, and to turn back in to deliver people out. But the enemy has created that level of net to, to keep us in. The one world order is going to bring us all connected in the net, and nobody's going to be free to leave. Matter of fact, we're not even going to know that we need to leave. We're not even going to know that freedom exists. It's going to be such a norm, like the iPhone 10 is a norm. It's a norm yeah. now not to know your phone number. It's a norm now to do all your business transactions. Then That's what it right. does, it destroys the independency because eventually you won't be able to do anything without your phone, which is coming to that That's right, right now. Right. See, Absolutely. it's a system of control. And you will live a normal life being <laughs> under a slave. Okay, so that's very key of how we understand it. Now, we as saints, we got to know how to use it like Morpheus, how to go in and out the system. That's right. And bring people in and out. We have to use it to our advantage. Very key. So that was that's a very good point. Very good point. And if you if you watch the movie, it's so deep because uh, when it first come on, Trinity has to get to the phone booth. That's her way of getting back out of the matrix. But when it first come on, and when I watch movies, I try to watch everything about a movie. That's right. When it first comes on, she's the the phone is being dialed to get into the matrix. She feels like the line is being traced. Yeah, she's she talking feels. to the enemy, and he said, "I think somebody's tracing his line." At the very beginning, he says, "Do you really believe he's the one?" And so this is doubt, and there is doubt in every mm -hmm. line of communication. To the My people God. who are trying to be free, there's another signal that's being released Woo! to make you doubt God, to make you doubt the purpose of God, God. to make you doubt your, your purpose and your passion of God and your real assignment. There's another. And so he goes on. So then she gets off real quick. She says, I think the line has been traced. Yeah. We got to know that even though we're doing this, the enemy's watching and he's using technology to trace us. This stuff about TV and iPhones, it really ain't about the benefit of the world. It's to trace those who are the Neos, who are the Morpheus, to know how they're moving so that the devil can hinder the move of God. And so he's always online. Like when I teach some Woo! things, I can tell, that like right now, the enemy's watching us. He's, he's, he's watching us. And so, and it's very key that we understand that he's always on the same frequency we are to try to hinder us setting other people free. So that's yeah. very key to that. From the very, and every time they go to get on the phone, there's some kind of problem happen. Every time in the movie you try to get out of the matrix, something try to interrupt that signal, whether it's your praise, whether it's your worship, whether it's your passion, whether it's your love, whether it's your marriage, something comes in to interrupt that, that signal so that you cannot go to the next level. And so that, that's what I say about that. <laughs> My God. So now with that, with that given, this is what I want to ask you. Because we I did I didn't talk about this yet, but I know you're getting ready to go into this. This this is the real question. What is the matrix? Right. <laughs> well, I mean, the movie talks about matrix is really the control. And it's so deep. Do you know the word matrix is in the Bible three times? Yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, most people didn't know the word matrix exists until the movie came out. But that's, I know. And that tells you how much we really don't study. But the word matrix is in the Bible way yes, before the movie came out. And so it deals with the first male that comes out of the womb. Mm -hmm. it's, it's any form of system that is anti the system of God that controls you and blinds you to what freedom really is. And that's what it is, is any system of control. Now that's, that, that'll take a whole year to like unveil because okay. there's so many <laughs> systems that we don't know that are controlling us. Mm -hmm. So many systems. And so, but that's really what the matrix is. It is all systems that are designed to keep you from thinking, uh, from progressing, from knowing your identity, that is anti the system of God. And I hate to say it, but most of our churches are connected to the matrix. I, I was just about most, to go most, there. Most of our churches will, has become the gateway to hell. I hate to say that. Not, not the called out ones, but the, but the system itself from Constantine. So there's a whole lot we don't know. Not even down to the church, but even our days, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, January means a two-headed two -headed God. December, all the months of the year, almost everything that we are involved in is connected to the matrix. But we don't know if we just say uh, the, day is, the day is Saturday, but we don't know right. what we say when we say Saturday. We don't know That's when we right. say January, February, March, April. All of those days are tied to the matrix. Tied the way in. Us, how we see people, our perception of people, life itself, 
It's all controlled. That's what the Matrix is. So really, the Matrix is our world that we believe is true. That's not. Because really, if you can see it in the natural eyes, it really doesn't exist. But we don't really believe that. The real ah, world is the invisible woo! world. You are speaking the truth because here it is, is right. that, you know, just like you were talking about the, the days of the week, because the enemy has changed everything. He's right. labeled it just like he changed the uh, the children with Daniel. He gave them new names so that they could right. know their identity in Christ, right? right? right. And, and when you talk about the days of the week and the systems, right, the systems in the years, if he can change that, he can change your season, right? That's right. So it, it means something. I remember how. I love, like I said, I love sci-fi. And when I began to look at certain things, you know, like even with the character, and I know this is going a little bit off, but I'm gonna come back, um, okay. talking about Thor, because that represents a God that actually was presented with the with the um, day of the week, Thursday. So right. it definitely overshadows us. We are so caught up in the culture of the world that we don't even know where we're at, we're at sometimes. Right. And we wonder why certain things are the way they are, is because unless you learn how to begin to be like the eagle and soar above the realms of the world as it is, right. you can't enter in. The Bible talks about us being in heavenly places, which really kind of means being outside of the world. Right. System. That's it. And you That's can't it. even do anything in God, really, and not right. as a, a ruler, right? right, instead of a churchgoer. And not right. as a ruler, you won't be able to do anything unless you begin to go up, right? And, right. and, and see, that's what I want to talk to you about, too, is that um, the red and the blue pill. Okay. Now, I, I, I know that you're going to talk about that as <laughs> far as those who are, what you just said, those who are the called out ones and those who are something else. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's so deep, you know, uh, man, this is heavy. It's so deep that it, it's, it's dealing with pills because pills are nothing but symbolic of a word. Mm -hmm. See, when, when, I, when I receive the word of God into my system, then the word of God begins to change my system. And so when I receive the word of God by faith, that's a pill. It's like if I take a Tylenol, how many Tylenol knows to go to the area to cause the headache to be removed? It's a word. And so a lot of times we believe in the pill, but we don't believe in the word. We stay the same. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when you take those two pills. Those pills are symbolic of the, of, the, of the word that will keep you locked into a system and you go back to your regular life, or it will free you from the system. There's a word that literally traces you, and you find out that that pill was a tracking, me tracking, tracing mechanism to okay. trace where he first got connected. Really, that was his born-again experience. Once yes. he took that pill, so once he had that, that's why he's naked and he's bald head and gook is all over him because he's going back to the place and he that's sees right, all the other babies connected. And so we have to have a word that finds where we got connected to religion, find where we got connected and disconnect us. But most people don't take the right pill. We think the blue pill is the right pill because exactly. the blue pill gives us pleasure in this world. Yeah. See, and most of the time we're afraid to take it, especially if we have any knowledge about the pill because we don't want to be disconnected. It takes faith to take the pill to know what the pill is going to do to you when you don't have any idea. He had, he really didn't have an idea what this pill was going to do. But by faith, because he heard something, when Trinity said there's like a splinter in your head, I know you hear it, Neil. I know you, you know it's out there. It's the mention. So he was willing to take yes. that leap of faith and take yes. that pill. But that's what they represent. It represents two systems of thinking. It represents your Cain and your Abel. It represents your Ooh. Jacob and your Esau. See, it represents uh -huh. those two. And so you got to decide which pill you're going to take or which word are you going to live by, one that connects you and controls you or one that frees you and gives you liberty. So that's very key. But those pills are symbolic. That's so deep that they chose red for the tracing one. We as Christians, we were tied to the blood of Christ. Come and, on. And, and the blue one was the world. But it's so deep because blue in Christianity means healing. And so it's seemed deep that you can't get healing until you get free. So that was a false illusion of the color blue because the real blue in Christianity would have brought healing. But the problem with us is we're trying to get healed before we got free. And if you didn't get free first, then your healing is an illusion of what they told you healing was. And most of the time, we don't know God. We know the God that's been programmed. The God has been told to us by the blue pill. Okay? Ooh. Very key. So that's, that's what's symbolic of that pill. And he had to take that. That's very key. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I'm, I'm just, I'm taking it all in. Now, um, I always want, I also want to talk about a statement that they made. Um, and, and one of the things he said, time is against us. Now, I know in the book of, um, in the book of Ecclesiastes, it's talking about those 
who are under the sun are really under, it's almost kind of like you're under the restriction of time. But though right. that, I, I have a, I have a thing about that because I really believe that if you're seated in heavenly places, then you're not restricted to time. But I right. want to hear your, your feedback on when they said time is against us. Well, again, that's, that's, that's a phrase that comes from the matrix. It's true if you're in the matrix, because what you said was absolutely right, okay? Most people don't know how to live above the sun. Most of us live underneath the sun. Come that's on, a danger. Sorry. Even in the book of Ecclesiastes, he said there's no new thing under, under the, sun. the sun. See, most of us don't even catch that. It's like, like that's, you're really surprising when you caught that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've been, Cause, mm, cause, let me say. Uh, <clears throat> okay. <laughs> right. Uh, because we get because... our things from eternity. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, no. I just wanted to, to say that because a lot of people say that, you know, we can't do nothing about time. Once it's done, it's done. But God is a God of reconciliation and restoration. And if he's, recon re re I believe, well, we're not going to go into what I believe, but we're going to talk about how time is is the matrix. It Eternity, is. There's, you can do any, the Bible says, whatever you believe, you can right. do it. Right. So if you're not restricted to the matrix and you're you're going into your heavenly domain, in other words, right. where you have authority, does that mean like with Elijah, he stopped something because he was able to affect time? No question about it. Right. No question about it. No question so, about it. Absolutely. Not only that, <laughs> Ephesians 6 says, it says, redeeming the time for the days are evil. Yes. See? <laughs> so we we always see things from a eternal perspective that has no time to make an impact in time. Okay, time is against us when we don't see it outside of time. See, when you don't see things outside of time, because really it's not time is against us. Let's go with what you say. The matrix is against us because right. the matrix operate in time. That's, That's right. In everything. Okay, in time it takes six weeks if you break your arm. Mm -hmm. To wear casting, Jesus can touch your arm and it heals instantly because right. you don't need time to bring healing because he goes outside of time. See what I'm saying? When Jesus That's takes right. the two fish and the five loaves of bread and he break them, it wasn't about breaking the fish because I don't care how much you break fish, five fish can't feed 5,000 people. I don't care how many times you break it. He didn't break the fish, he broke the limitations that we believe about the fish. We That's believe right. it's only two fish and five loaves of bread. He says, no, if you see it from eternity, one thing is all things. See, mm. it goes back, now this is another movie, it goes back to Lucy. Lucy says about time, if we speed it up, it won't exist anymore. So what's hold us in bondage is time. Time makes us believe that we're real. Time is what allow me to see you. But really, Ooh. I'm not looking at you, I'm looking at the image of you in a place of captivity called time or called matrix. If I see you from a spiritual place, you never had a form. You never, you never was locked to it. I wish you somebody never could would be get here this. or there. That's why the kingdom is not low here or low there. That's time. But the kingdom is from within. From within is the east. That's the east is where there is no time. That's why Jesus come out of the east. He come out of the place where there is no time. So we grab it and call it the eastern star. But the east is a place from within. It's a realm within a realm that doesn't have time. This is why we call ourselves worshipers. We say we're going to go to heaven and worship. Well, you can't worship God in heaven if there is no time. That's a whole nother place because time, music needs time to be music. But there is a sound that doesn't have time. There's That's a right. language that doesn't have time. Okay? And so this is the key. And so time is against us when you operate from the time zone. From yeah. the time zone, think, because, because this is why. Because in the time zone, things have to die. In the time zone, things have to expire. So time is against us because we have to work in time to get them out before death or before separ separation. See, that's the key to it. But when we see from an eternal perspective, then I'm not limited by time. Absolutely. I, I mean, I, I have to, now that that's we're talking question. about that, now that we're talking about that, I want to talk about something that he told him when he initiated him into the, uh, the program to show him what reality really was, dream world versus the real world, right? right. And he began to talk to him about how to, um, how to be able to get around. Um, he said, this is what he said, and, and this is the truth. He said, some rules can be bent, some can be broken. 
So he's not talking, of, he's talking about the physics, the scientific laws that govern under the sun, right? That's right. the laws he's talking about that can be bent and broken. And right. if you are able to understand how the spiritual laws work, then right. that's when you can break or bend them. And it's the right. same thing when you're thinking about how the inventors invent things because they get a download from God, like the right. Wright brothers, they get ostracized because average people don't believe something that they never saw before. Right. And you got to right. see it with your eyes, your inner eye, not from your natural eye. So I want right. you to kind of talk about um, that's where the supernatural realm comes in, where you talk about the fishes and the load, is that right. you have to break or bend the laws that right. govern the earth realm, with her, which are scientific and physical, right. which God did create. But right. I also believe he created that to also make this earth a training zone or program that we can learn to be like him. Come on. Come on now. <laughs> it's the schoolmaster. This, exactly this here right. is a training ground. This is boot right. camp. And when those who will really go the test in the length of that time, they will be able to come out and become true sons of God that the earth is groaning and moaning and waiting for those who are coming out of their immaturity to, so that they can take those things that be not as though they are and make Ooh. them to come into this realm. Come on. Come on now. So I wanted, I wanted you to kind of talk about how the scientific rules and regulations that run this earth right. are, are not to be compared with God's glory. Right. Well, let's take what you said, because you, you said something I say all the time. Let's go with the Wright brothers, right? The Wright brothers invented something we call the airplane, mm -hmm. even though we know there's a law called gravity. The law yes. of gravity said what goes up must come down. They mm -hmm. figured out a way how to suspend that law, okay? Now, how did they suspend that law? They created a law that was greater than that law that suspended. It's called the law of lift. If yes. you have enough power, you can lift something and suspend the law of gravity. Now, gravity is still there. It's suspended. If you ever crash, gravity will take over and your plane coming down. Because That's you right. did not remove gravity, you suspended it. That's, That's what right. they do. Okay? So we must understand it. We need gravity to keep us down on the earth. Okay, but at the same time, we can't be limited on the ideas that God give us because gravity is in place. So we have to know how to use gravity to our advantage, but don't let it limit the expression or the ideas or the creativity that God has given us because he's the creator. So that's very key. And that's in everything. Same thing with your natural body. That's you right. can have sickness. There's laws in your body that say you too much sugar. I'm going to shut this down. I can't handle that sugar. So you can get sugar diabetes even though you say based upon the laws that God made for the body. But right. you can pray and, he, and God can heal you and suspend those laws or break those laws. That don't mean abuse those laws and eat as much sugar as you want. That's that means right. to acknowledge the law, but know that there's a law giver bigger than the law that's been established. And when we learn how to work hand in hand in those, then we can understand grace and mercy because a lot of us are breaking laws that God don't want us to break. And then a lot of us are being subject to laws God want us to bend that we don't know when to break the two fish in the loaves of bread. See, My so that's God. very key. So we understand how to work those laws. And that works hand in hand in so many different areas. That's I talk right. about that all the time, how we have to learn how to suspend them. Like, I believe that rest suspends sleep. Mm -hmm. something that God's been showing me lately. And that most of us think we need more sleep, but we don't know how to rest. You can rest and not be asleep. You see, and so the Bible talks about Jesus, that God rests on the seventh day. Most of the time we don't know what that rest is, even though he neither sleeps nor slumbers. So how does he rest, but he doesn't sleep? But he rests. <laughs> we got to learn how to labor to enter into his rest. There's a rest in God that you mm -hmm. literally can rest and have not slept in three days and have just as much energy. This is what Daniel tapped into when he said, I don't need to eat the king's meat. He tapped into a system outside of the matrix that made that's his body right. more wiser, more stronger than anything because he tapped into a system that suspended the laws that I need this type of wine to be strong. I need this type of education. There are people who tap into the spirit who have no schooling, but they know ah. more than people who've been to schooling because they under another law. And so the that's Bible right. talks about we're free from the law of sin and death, but the law of the spirit, see? And so that law of the spirit teaches how to suspend these natural laws so that we can be supernatural in a natural world. That's the whole purpose of it. It's to show Come us how on. to walk it. As you said, the sons, oh, the earth is waiting on us for the sons of God to be manifested with the ability to suspend the laws. 
Okay? Oh. There's no way a man can be at a gate for, for all that life, ever since he's been born, and he, he's never walked, and they touch him, and instantly he doesn't walk, he leaps. He goes from never crawling to never walking to leaping. The bones need time to mature. But because the miracle took them past time, it automatically he went from never knowing how to walk to knowing how to leap and instantly because he tapped into another law. This is all throughout the Bible. That's really what being an apostle in the five, four minutes is all about. It's about revealing the supernatural law to the natural. That's what it's all about. That's true. That's right. That's right, apostle. Let me say this is that I want to kind of tap into something that in the beginning, and th this is another area that we're talking about, you know, as in the prophetic and in, in the apostolic, the gifting of this uh, realm is to really train, right? Is to train right. them to learn how to not just be born again and get to the door of salvation, right. but now how to enter. And I think what, and this is just Ooh. my experience, and I could be off, but this is my experience is that as a born again woman of God, um, I was being trained and mentored by prophets, but I didn't understand the prophetic because I didn't grow up in church. So okay. I didn't really understand what a real prophet was. And so I was just kind of following behind. But here's the thing about all prophets must come to a point where it's between them and God so that they can really get true intimacy right. and understanding of what it is to be what he's making you to be, what, whatever oh. that is. Come but on. here's the thing is that when you come into the church realm, I didn't say kingdom. When, right. in, when you come into the church realm, a lot of times you're not really, you, you, you're taught duties that uh, that have something to do with the inner just building being a building but you're not really focused on your true authentic assignment as to who you are so it's kind of hard to walk in that when you're really eating and i mean drinking milk for so long and eating baby food and then right. when real revelation comes you still can't operate because you don't have the stomach for it and, right. and i want to say that you know, all of these things that prophets and apostles are supposed to do is to really get people in a position and a place that they can uh, not just be born again, but they can begin to grow up in the spirit realm and begin to take on a certain essence and nature right. of God. And right. instead of doing all of these little whatever, it, right. it needs to be, I, I want to say this because with Neo, he and, and training must be, right? Training, Neo right. was taken on the roof. Because right. he wanted to train him, he, he didn't know. He didn't just want to teach him how to fight, right? right. That was the first right. um, order that he did. Was he taught him how to fight, right? right. A lot of people want right. to learn how to do warfare, but what comes after that? What are you going to do from, from there? When he took right. him on that rooftop and he says, "Now let's see if you really believe. Right. Can you go from here to point right. B and, and not fall?" That's now we right. all just like a baby. When you yeah, walk, you you know you learn how to walk. You crawl. Some children don't walk. They wow. But wow. that depends on the individual. And that's not right. to say that there's anything smarter about that person. It's just right. that your individual experience. So right. I want to talk about the first time that Morpheus took him out and he had him on the rooftop and he says, follow me, like Jesus right. did. And he right. ran from one rooftop to the right. other. Right. And, right. Have, and how that ties into the training that we should be doing with the um, body of Christ or the, the ones who are coming into the places where God okay. wants them to be. Okay. Well, that's good. Well, let's, let's, let's back up a little bit. Okay. He's born again. Uh, once he's born again and they pull him out, uh, once he's disconnected, they, uh, they have to bring his body back to where he needs to be. So they're doing all this. They got all these needles in his body. He asks us a question because I want to walk you all the way through it. He asks us a question and the question was, why did my eyes hurt? Morpheus yeah. said you've never used them before. <laughs> Okay. I got that real, so, you, so everything you've ever saw, <laughs> you've never seen <laughs> So you need your vision. Then once he does that, they in a the room, he wakes up and Morpheus is behind him and he says, I must apologize to you. Usually we don't set minds loose at this age because we can't teach older people. So most we well, apologize to you because what we're asking you to do, usually you can't do at your age. In other words, you're so entrenched in religion you're so entrenched in church that you're not even free to accept your responsibility. So I must That's apologize right. to you. Once that's over, then the guy comes and says, man, I'm excited about you. I'm excited about what we're going to do. If you can really do what Morpheus said you can do, my God, we're waiting on you. So let's go to training. So he takes him, puts him down on the chair, which I call the heavenly place. He's sitting yes. in the heavenly place. He's in his ship of Nebuchadnezzar. So he's sitting in this boat, which is really symbolic of the kingdom, the yes. free kingdom. Mm -hmm. He's there. 30 seconds, he comes up and he says, I know Kung Fu. He says, okay, let's see. Okay, then he sits down 
in about 10 hours, and Morpheus shows him, said, how long have you been doing that? He says, well, about 10 hours. Oh, he can download, he can take so much, which deals with the well of our spirit. Most of us never maximize the well of our spirit. Even people mm. who watch this today, they'll say, well, how long are they going to talk? We don't understand how to stay in a place. The That's man right. who possessed with demons, over 600 demons, he wasn't designed to carry demons. He was designed to carry angels. There's no way they could have found that room in his mind to have 600 demons if that was not made for God. We know that it was in his mind because when he got cast out, he was sitting and clothed in his right mind. And so the enemy is after the, the capacity of the well of your mind. And so Neil was able to take over 10 hours of training outside of time. This is not time 10 hours. This is eternal time 10 hours. He does that. Then Morpheus says, okay, then let's see if he really knows. Then Morpheus trains him and begins asking questions. Hit me, Neil. Come on. You're faster than this. Do you yes. think this is air that you're breathing? Come on. You're removing the delusions in the training. You'll never maximize who you are until all the de delusions are gone in your mind. Once yes. he do that, then he says, let's go to another program. This is called the jump program. But you got to let it all go first. Fear, doubt, disbelief. He first declares the three ma major entities that keep you from the spirit, that keeps you in the matrix. If these things is what you got to let go, these are the things that the matrix tells you you have to keep. Fear, doubt, and disbelief. Then he don't tell him, he shows him, and he jumps. <laughs> then that he jumps. was amazing. See? So then, but, but Neil is not all the way convinced that he's the one yet. That's See? true. So there's still some Mr. Anderson in him, even though he's in a free place, even though he's in heavenly place, there's still some Mr. Anderson in him. So he says, okay, let me see what I can do. Okay, let's try it. <laughs> he, he's trying to attempt to do what he's been called to be. Most of us don't know how to operate in our be because church taught us what to do. So he's trying to, he's trying to do it. See? So, so he does it, and then he jumps, and then he looks down. <laughs> and then he falls. And so that's very key in our life. And they said, well, nobody passes the first fall, okay? But he's still the one, but he had to learn how in that training, you got to let go. Fear, doubt, disbelief. And then you got to, and, and listen to these things, fear, doubt, disbelief. What are these things connected to? That you think you're breathing? That you think you're in a warfare? That you think this is the world? You got to let it all go. See? You got to let it all go. You'll never be able to hit me the way you can hit me. You'll never be able to. In your training, your real training is letting go. You can never say thy kingdom come until your kingdom go. You got to let go Ooh. everything that you have that establish you a believer in the matrix before you can be free in God's kingdom. So that's that's one of my favorite things. <laughs> that's not my deep favorite, but that's one of my favorites. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. So I want to talk about some more stuff now. Don't think I have not. I've, I've, I've kept a side note that you're talking about, and I want to go back to that. I want to talk about the world being a, um, there's a word I'm looking for. Uh, we'll get back to that. It's kind of like the world being um, not really what we see. It, it's, it's talking about it kind of being an illusion. But there's, yeah. a, there's another word that I want to talk about, and, and I'll okay. hopefully that'll come back to me. I want to yeah. uh, talk about... Um... Well, let me put a pin there. That's a good point. See, I believe anything that we see with the natural eyes is not real. That's, mm -hmm. that's my belief. I believe the only real... I believe that when the enemy talks to Eve in the garden, he says, the day you eat of this fruit, your eyes should be open. Well, their spiritual eyes were already open. They that's could right. not have saw where the tree was if their eyes weren't open. And so, uh -huh. the, so the delusion was not that their eyes be open, but their eyes be open to the reality of the world which he controls. Yes. You Ooh. see? And so that's yeah. very key. And as long as I let you see that it's water, you'll be afraid to walk because you think it's water. See, I'm that's not right. walk on water. Water is irrelevant. I don't walk on water. I don't walk on land. I walk on where he told me to come. It's the word that I walk upon, not, with, not the elements. It's the word. So if he say come, then I'm coming because he said come. Everything else is irrelevant. See what I'm saying? And so, so, but he opened their eyes to reality. So ever since we had our, our five senses, now we have a whole problem with who we are in God as our spiritual senses because our, our natural eyes tell us that's real, but that's not real. Now that kind of goes back to my favorite scene in the whole movie is the little boy who says, or the girl, I don't know which one it was. The boy says, with the spoon? About the spoon. It's my very first, my... <laughs> I love that. She said, because in yeah. order to move this spoon, 
you first must believe that there is no soul. <laughs> right. See? That's right. When you get rid of the illusion that there's something, because it's never about the spoon, it's never about mountains, it's never about buildings, it's always been about us. It's about you. And when you move, didn't the spoon move? See? But we gotta get rid of what we think is true. See, that's we gotta true. get rid of what we think is true. We gotta get rid of, that's why we walk by faith, not by sight. See? We move by what we see. We gotta be moved by what we saw. Eve tapped into what she saw, not what she see. She saw the tree to make one wise. She tapped into it from another realm. The right. enemy knew that that realm was there, but back to the laws. I can't get to you because there's a law that won't let me get to you. But when you break the law, you have I, now I have access to the law you That's broke. That's right. See? That's right. It's there. See, because because the, the the knowledge here it is the knowledge of good and evil. It says it says don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Good is not a truth, and neither is evil. We believe mm -hmm. it is. Good and evil are perceptions. What you call good, I can call evil. What you call evil, I can call good. It's perceptions. He said, don't eat of the tree that takes you from God to perceptions. Prior to the perception, all they knew was God. See, God works in, in singular. The enemy works in plural, in a sense. See, and so the Bible says when your eye is singled, single, then it's full of light. Stereo mm. is a split signal. See? And so that's very key. And so we understand that. So we got to stop believing in what we see. Now, our whole job is to have discernment, is to bring things that we see from a spiritual place into yes. the worldly place and to know that it's a spiritual thing to come down. See what I'm saying? So as it is in heaven, let it be on earth. Those are the things we should believe in. Only things I saw in the spirit and let it manifest on earth. But the things that are clear on this earth, I know that's not the truth. And if I know that, then I'll, I'll never fight you. Because you're not my problem. I don't fight against flesh and blood. That's I true. don't fight in which I can see. Even knowing God. That's what I told, and this is a hard statement what I'm about to say. Most people have never met God. They met the God that was given to them in a program. Uh, it's, see, I can, I, I can add God to a program like a VCR. And you can play what was recorded in you. I'll put that VCR in you. So you have a, a film or a movie. Something moves in or move out. It's like you can watch a movie and you can cry and have real tears, but he never died. The movie produced something that was real from something that was not real. How many That's things right. we think is real because we're crying, but what you're crying about never happened. It was just a movie. It's just, it's the mm -hmm. dream world. How do you know the difference between the dream world and the real world? Most of us don't know the, the real, how to get out of the dream world, you see? And so it goes back to what you're saying. Until I meet God for myself, and he teaches me one-on-one, -on -one, Maybe you just gave me the God, the program. I always say this. This is kind of a side note. I say, why when people be in church and I lay hands on you, you pass out? But I've never seen you pass out no other place but church. Could that be a program? I've seen you at Walmart, you didn't pass out. I've hugged you with all I have. I'm just as anointed in Walmart as I am in church. Why you only pass out in church? Maybe, maybe passing out wasn't God. Maybe passing out was the program you, that you were shown. That's that you're supposed to respond to. Because why does it happen in any other place? Why does it only happen in church? Now, that okay. doesn't say that God doesn't do that. that. That just says, maybe we should check and see if it's God or is it the program. Let's just see. Because maybe, 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 maybe the matrix is just like prison. You can, you can have life in prison and they'll let you go to church, but you're still in prison. Maybe we have in church in prison. Maybe <laughs> it's like you are just, preaching this gospel. You are preaching this gospel. Let me tell you something. Many people are in bondage and they go to church every Sunday, pay their tithes, ain't got nowhere, ain't, ain't grown anyway. They can tell you, they can't even lead you to Christ. They'll be like, come to my church so my pastor can deliver you. Come on. Then you have been in church come for on. 20 years and you can't lay hand and, and speak over somebody's life? Come on. Real talk. <laughs> Real talk. I mean, that's crazy, but there are people just like that. I need you to come to my prophet. I need you to come to my bishop. Like right. he got. Right. I mean, he has an assignment, true. But right. if you've been under that person for so many years and you don't have any God in you, what is that? Wow, that's real talk. I hear your passion. That's real. <laughs> so, <laughs> I want to talk about when he took him out on another program and he was showing him, and, and this, this is what he said, I wanna read this. It says, the ones that were called to free are so enabled by the matrix that they will fight you 
or that they will become angry and irritated at your presence because they're still trapped in the system and anything that's not like them is kind of like that spiritual, you know, where you a person cannot even like you, they don't even know you. Right. So, and he talked about that even though we're called to save them, them, the them, right? right? right. We're called to save them, but they don't want anything to do with us and God because we, we they like the matrix. They like right. the matrix. And I wanna I wanna say this too before you before you begin. I love how they integrated in, in they they put inside that system the woman with the red dress. Right. Right. And and she was actually not what he thought. And he exactly. got caught, right? He got right. distracted and he said, Do you think that this woman is who she is and it was really an agent? Right. Exactly. So I want you to kind of elaborate on how, of course, we're called and we're sent out to the wolves, right? And we're supposed to help them, but they're resistant because they like they they're connected and they and they like it like the well, we're not gonna go there, but they like it. What right. would you say about well, that in terms of marriage? You know, me and my wife was talking about this today. I was saying, you know, when you call to love people, you got to love people who don't love you back. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know your assignment as God wants to use you as love, um, you'll get discouraged and you'll quit. And this is, this is very common, that particular problem, because the very people you're trying to free, they're defending their bondage. There mm -hmm. will be people that will literally, and we, this happened in slavery, where people will tell on you or have you killed. Because you're trying to free them from the slave master. Uh, same very thing. Key. See? And so, and so this is very common. You got to know your calling. And you got to understand the bondage of it. And, and, and it really is so deep because the bondage of it, there's a system in the bondage that tells you to hate the light. The Bible says you lovers of darkness rather than light. So this is real. So mm -hmm. us who are free to know we got to save them, we got to look for them to fight us. Uh, the more I preach truth, the more I'm, I'm criticized and ostracized. One of the reasons that God pulled me away from the institutional side of church is yes. so that I can preach freedom. Because Amen. as long as I need them, I couldn't lead them. As long as I needed them, I couldn't lead them. And so God had to separate me because there's some things that we'll never say. Because the things that we say free people from the system. And the system says, do not tell the truth. You got to be willing to be ostracized, criticized. That's right. You, wanna, you got to be willing to be alone. So it's come along with it. So everybody that you're helping, don't think they're going to say thank you or God bless you. They're going to fight you to protect that system because they're blind. They're no different than a person who's drowning. A person that's drowning does not understand you as a lifeguard will drown you trying to save them. They're uh. <laughs> and they will literally pull you under. So when I was studying to be a lifeguard, they say sometimes you have to knock them out in order to save their lives. My God. Fight. And so this happened. We should know that from our own life because how much do our flesh fights us against spirituality? The same yes. fight that people put up against us is the same fight we put up against God when God is calling us out of our own way of thinking. So this is our commitment to our call to know that I'm going to have to struggle with the people who need me. There are people that I had to chase that needed me. But I knew they needed me, but they were going to never come after me. I have to go out with, go after them. And they didn't return my phone calls. I had to keep calling them. I had to keep calling. That was one of the things that my dad taught me, even though he didn't know he was teaching me. My dad didn't show me the love that I thought he should show me as a father. But God mm -hmm. would keep telling me to love him because I had to learn how to go after people because my father was still locked up in the matrix. Until this mm -hmm. day, he's still struggling with some freedoms of his mind. But my job, I'm the Neo. They're not the Neo. I'm the one that's been trained. That's right. I'm the one that's been educated. I'm mm -hmm. the one that spent those nights in prayer. I'm the one that God won't let me sleep in the middle of the night and waking me up and talking to me. I'm the one that has those special encounters. I'm the one that had to be trained by Pharaoh right. before I was trained by God, like Moses. I had to spend 40 years in Egypt to learn to, to, to be sensitive to those that are messed up. Real talk. Ah. You see? And there's some things that I had to learn that God let me learn from darkness so I can help somebody in life. See? That's, right. so that's real talk. And so there's a great resistance and they will fight you and they will not understand you. And if you if you still connected or want some of the dreams, y'all still have some alignments or agreements, you want to abort your mission as, as Neil. You got to know that you cannot be connected. That's real talk. The most people that you're going to help, they're going to gossip about you as soon as you get through helping them. And you got to go right back and help them again because that's what you call. But it's just going to be some resistance. And you got to be willing. It's, it's sad to say that your training is really for the people that need you. 
your training, you know, you you gonna have to fight people. They gonna act like they're agents because this is a, this is about the woman in the red dress. As long as they're not unplugged, they can be used by the devil at any time. That's I right. tell my wife all the time, people will say things to me and I can hear the devil. I can hear the devil talking to me through them. They don't even know that they're mocking me, but I, the devil has always mocked me for the way I thought. He hates the way I think. He hates the way I ties into God. So they would say things like, you too deep. Why you always got to go there? You're not balanced. Life can't be all spiritual. That ain't them. That's the devil. That's the system of the matrix that's telling you to join in with us. Come on, let's, let's enjoy this state that really ain't state. Come on, let's enjoy this life that really ain't living. But why you got to be so deep? Why you got to go so far, you know? Why, why you got to always break everything down? Can you be normal? Like, they think living in the matrix is normal. They don't even know what normal living is. Normal yeah. living is flying, not walking. Normal Woo! living, come on. on. No, normal living is creating, not hoping somebody hire you. You're a creator from your words. Not hoping somebody enslave you, but they don't know it. So you have to understand that. And so, and so they talk, and it really be the devil. The devil be mocking you, you know? And so I understand that, but I understand that I ain't talking to you anyway. I'm talking to the agent yeah. that's in you. <laughs> See what I'm saying? So, Because there's a time when you move in God that the devil is afraid of you. <coughs> so what he does, he keeps people away from you so that yeah. he don't have to deal with you. See? See, there, there's times in your life the devil knows. Because this is the truth. When you become light, like Morpheus told Neil, he said, well, you think I'll be able to dodge bullets? He said, no, you won't have to. When you know who you are, you won't have to. And when That's he finally right. comes to who he is, he don't fight the, the bullets. He just stop down and the bullets fall. See? See? Real talk. And see, there's a light that has to come out of us that causes Ooh. the devil to fear us because yes. of the illumination that I carry in my field, the anointing now, that I carry in my life. Okay? Very key. And so I'm going to have that. But I got to be willing to put up that fight because that fight going to prove how much I believe in the mission. See, am I really after to save you or do I just want a church? Do I just want a congregation? Do I just want the things that come along with that? Or do I really want you free? Because if, if somebody stepped on my toe and I got mad because they stepped on my toe real hard, but if I looked up and saw that they were blind, can I still be upset when they can't see what they just did? We're fighting blind people that need My sight. God. don't need battle. They don't need criticism. They need somebody to love them and bring them back to their sight, not criticize them because they can't see. See? So you got to know that as well. You got to know. And so, and love that cannot be abused is not love. The whole purpose of love is to suffer all things, endure all things. You can't tell when you connected to God, but you don't have no substance to handle. Love is only tolerated until it can be celebrated. It has to be tolerated first because blind people don't know how to celebrate love until they get their eyes back. Until they get Woo. their eyes back. That, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I could just marinate that for a minute. But I want to talk about this. You said a lot, and there's a lot to be said. I know we, we can't keep this going forever, but I want to I wanna address a couple of things. Um... In the movie, when it talks about the sentient, now it talks about the agents, but it also talks about the sentients, which are the gatekeepers. Okay, right. so now, how is that relevant to the principalities? Right, you have the different chain of command in darkness, so right. they're trying to kind of literally tell you that there are gatekeepers, like every city has a gatekeeper. In right. reality, in reality, we're supposed to be at the gate, right. I'm going to, I'm going to really, me and my wife, we're going to really keep you in prayer because you know some things that the average person don't know. And so I got to, I got to protect you as well from the gatekeepers because I see you a gatekeeper. Uh, <laughs> most people don't know about gatekeepers. There's a fivefold ministry of God according to Ephesians 4 and 11, but there's also a fivefold ministry of the devil according to Ephesians 6. That's what you're talking about. Rulers of darkness, principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places. Those are the gatekeepers. Most of us have never dealt with the gatekeepers of our city. David, that's why you got to know the keys of David. David understood the, understood those key makers. And so that's why David understood. It don't matter if I kill a bear and a lion. The gatekeeper was Goliath. Goliath controlled that whole city. That's why his other brothers would get dressed for battle, but they would never come down. Because the gatekeeper of the city had them afraid. 
David was being trained by the kill the bear and the lion, which is representation of different cities. That how he understood how to kill the smaller demons in other cities, so he can move to the Goliath in his city. That's the real. That's the real thing. Moving, I was just talking to my wife about that. I said New Orleans. God has given me a message about the power and the purpose of religion for a positive, because most religion is negative. But there's a positive side of religion. And the positive side of religion is when you religiously do what God tells you to do. To consistently against the gatekeepers. They're gatekeepers. Like I live, we live in New Orleans. New Orleans has so much witchcraft going here. But they constantly, the gatekeepers keep the festivals alive. They, they make sure drinking is allowed 24 hours. They yeah. make sure drinking was allowed in every store. You can go to Walmart and get hard liquor. Who ordained this city to allow liquor to be like that when you go to other cities and you got to go to state stores? Why can New Orleans? Same thing was going on with Atlanta. Atlanta's being saturated with demonic, there are demons that literally are running the city of Atlanta now. And it's allowing that city to embrace homosexuality, lesbians, whatever. Yes. See? Yes. Because gatekeepers have decided, and every city has a certain gatekeeper that allows certain things. That's why you go to certain cities, you see homosexuals stronger in this city. Or Come murder on. stronger in this city yes. because of the gatekeeper. Yeah, That's gatekeeper. what he's referring to, those gatekeepers. And until we deal with those gatekeepers, we'll never win our city. You may never. win your little church. You, you oh. and your family may be able to do something. But if you try to go global, and see, this is, a, this, this is the thing about water. Water has to go global. There's seven stages of water. Most of them know the first stage was mist. Then there was rains. Then there's rivers. Then there's streams. You'll never, your ministry will never go global until you conquer the gatekeepers in your city. See, Come on. They'll hold you down. So this is very key. And most people don't even know about it. Now, every city has what is called an airport. That airport is called arrival or departure. Oh, and so every gatekeeper has spirits that are arriving and departing. Now, Jacob saw this when he laid on the rock, which is Jesus. He said, I saw angels ascending and descending. Gatekeepers carrying messages. I got to hold my head. Jacob is symbolic of Israel and the 12 tribes. In every tribe, there's a level of gates. There are 12 gates in man, 12, 12 disciples in man, 12 apostles in man, 12 months in the, in the year, 12 keys on the keyboard, the apostolic government. So if you don't understand these gates at each level, you'll never go higher. So that's, and it's a whole lot more, but we'll go there. We, we know we can't even, um, apostle. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. Now I'm in the. I'm just gonna say this as a sidebar. I'm in the New York region. You already know what that means, right? Right. Okay. New yeah. York. Right. The beast of the belly. Wow. So. <laughs> wow. Woo! That's where you at? Yes. Wow. That's big. Yeah. 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 Um. Pray for wow. me. <laughs> yeah. That's what I said when you start talking. I said, "Wow, she knows a lot." Okay. I want to talk about the killing machine. When they were in their ship, the Nebuchadnezzar right. ship, right. right, and they were talking about, um, you know, that they they had entered into. It's kind of like a land where it was a wasteland where there used to be cities that were flourishing, right? Right. And now this is kind of like the sewer tunnels, and so right. they were vulnerable because it said here. I want I want to get your input. I want to get your opinion about this. Where it talks about the EMP, the electromagnetic right. pulse. Right. Right, right. The energy. We, we got to understand something. I, I, I don't. I'm kind of. I don't like to say certain things because I know that you know the the military, the the religious police are listening. But, right. Uh, I'm. This my life. This our life. You know. Right. We we, we <laughs> <laughs> want to talk about how you know people in the world recognize that we are energy. We are spirit, but energy and and spirit are more or less. Uh, right. interactive. In other words, right. I got I'm you. just going to leave it to you to tell us about these killing machines you. and what that represents, but I wanted to throw that out there too, just in case you wanted to kind of talk about that. Well, I mean, that's a very key thing because, like you said, that's the only thing we have left is these dark tunnels where these cities was, the ruins. And and so, I, I, I believe that that's, there's a lot of layers to that, but one of the layers is I hide in the shadow of the Almighty. And so there's a place that we must hide which we're not allowed to let the energy or the light that we have, it can't be shown in that place. That's right. And this is where um, this is where we become undercover agents. This is when we're not detected. Um, um, yeah, I'll say it like that because everybody can't handle what I said. But, but I'll, I'll say it like this. Um, there is 
if you study science, which you do, there is a whole lot of light in a dark place. Yes. Even the dark holes are full of lights, but you got to go past the dark holes to get them. There's a place beyond the dark place that you'll see God, but but you won't see God from the way you used to see God. Yes. It won't come from the light, it'll come from the dark. See? And so that's that place. And that place is where we take everything down that we have to be able to infiltrate the darkness to not be discovered. Uh, this is what Paul meant when he said, I become all things that some may be saved. And so in that place, they literally cut off the energy so the enemy will not see them as a they're threat. Light. Exactly. Exactly. They're exactly. able to hide. Exactly. Exactly. And the enemy would think that they just ruins. It's just a dark place. There's nothing mm -hmm. here. It's empty. Um, and I won't say a lot about it, but this is something that God had me become a lot of times. I share this with my wife too. One time uh, I was in Buffalo, New York, and um, I was about to catch the bus. And this is a true story. People gonna think I'm crazy when I say this. Um, but this is a true story. This actually happened to me. I was on my way to catch a bus, and God told me to go back to a church. Uh, he wanted me to visit the church. And I didn't know when he was, what was going on. But when I got off the bus, and this literally happened. You can document this. It's a true story. People ain't going to believe this. But I turned into a bum, literally. Mm. I had an old raggedy, like a gray coat. It turned into. I didn't have that on, but it appeared. Yes. Covered me, and I looked like a bum. And I walked in the church, and they treated me like a bum. And they wouldn't let me go up front. They wouldn't let me sit there. Maybe be in the back. And I kept saying, I want, and the spirit kept saying, go try to go to the front. And they wouldn't do it. And I was sitting there, and I was looking raggedy. My hair had changed. My clothes had changed. Everything had changed. And then I sat in the back. And then maybe up 30 minutes, God says, you can go now. And when I got up and walked out of the church, I heard the Lord say, I'm taking my spirit from this church. And Ooh. when I walked out, Everything mm. that I had came back. Mm -hmm. Plus, that's that, that's that EMP when God took the light off me, allowed me to infiltrate a place that I could not be recognized. That's who My you light are. could not be seen, <laughs> but I was there for a reason. That happens in many things like that. I know that may sound weird, but that's it. Not for me. I mean, <laughs> I just believe that if the enemy can transform himself into a light. <laughs> Come on now. Hello. See, right. people don't realize who they really right. are in the spirit realm. They don't right. understand that we can be transformed right. into different right. images, but that's not right. for this live. We're not. Right, right. right. Not and you know, I don't want to go there, but there are many things in the Bible. The Bible says that the prophet turned into another man as he was walking to Saul. He turned into another man. See, real talk. I mean, we can deal with a whole lot of stuff. Even when when uh, Philip was was witnessing to the guy who wanted to be baptized, you know, and the, the next thing you know, he baptized him. And the next thing you know, he's in a whole other city, hundreds of miles away. Yeah. Hundreds of miles away. In one verse, he's a whole other person. This is consistently in the Bible. Consistently in the Bible. I can show you over and over again how God, I mean, there's so many mysteries in the Bible that we got to be able to see that God cuts off our EMP. What is it called? Uh, what is it? What's the title they gave for that? Electricity? Um, um, when they talked about the EMP, they said it's the electromagnetic pulse. Pulse, okay, EMP, right. And so there's a lot of times that God turned it off. And, and, and be honest with you, God, I feel you're doing A lot of people were supposed to be able to allow God to do that. This is what we really were supposed to do in the entertainment, in sports. God wanted to use them, but what happens is they compromise that. They compromise that. You have yeah. to know. You have to know when to be silent in God and not be seen but felt. This is yeah. what God was doing to Moses when He said, "Be still and see the salvation." It wasn't the time to be still. There's a million people chasing me, mountains on both sides, and a river in front of me, the Red Sea. But He said, "Be still and see." There's a place where you, where you just see. Be still Woo! and see. Oh my God. Cut off your EMP. Be still and see the salvation of the Lord. Look like the enemy gonna get you, but he's not. Because you've been covered under the shadow of the Almighty. You're abiding in that place. See, we want to talk so much and do so much that we don't know how to let God fight our battles and shut it down. The light is still there, but the enemy won't recognize it. And a lot of people were supposed to be in places. The about time they were discovered, it was too late. God wants to use this as undercover agents, but we don't know how to cut it off. We don't know how to not make it church, even on our jobs or in our homes. A lot of times God will connect you to people that you are there for other reason why you think you're there. You gotta know it. Amen. The Amen. truth of the matter, and, I, and I'll stop here. 
God wants to use us as angels, but we don't know how to be submissive. We're supposed to be angels in people's lives. People want to see us 20 years later be like, you know what? That wasn't who I thought it was. That was God. Wow. Right. I see that. Yeah. I have two more questions. Okay. Um, the one is talk about a, talk about the oracle. I'm going to put that there. And also, I want to talk about the scene when Neo starts to believe. But let's go to the oracle first because, see, here's the, here's the issue that I have about the oracle. Right, we're not even going to go about all of the secularism that came with that because that's irrelevant. We want to go through the spirit of of what she was trying to represent. I want right. to say that the oracle and what she was trying to say is that it's like, and you help me, is that I'm he's not ready to know until he's ready to know. Right. So you tell me what you right. felt about the oracle. Well, the oracle represents wisdom. She represents so much, but I mean, she speaks in so many codes. You can just watch her scene alone and get a whole new movie. <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, she says a lot of things. And Morpheus said, she told you what you needed to hear. See, yeah. that's, what I was, that's what I was just saying. There's a middle ground that God has us play that if you didn't know the truth, you would think God having us lie. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the same thing when, when the spies went into the Canaan land and God led uh, uh, Rahab to say the spies are not here. Now, you're lying, mm -hmm. Rahab. The spies is upstairs in your roof. But yeah. God told you to stay there, not here. Is God telling you to lie? Uh-oh. Or is there design for us to get to a certain place? And there's a lot of things in the Bible that if you don't see it from a spiritual point of view, they look off. That's how the oracle look. So the oracle seemed like, but, she, but she told him the truth. She says, maybe you're waiting on something. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe <laughs> you don't know. Maybe something needs to die. She was really saying that you got to die to Mr. Anderson first. Yes. She brought up Trinity, but he didn't know it. She said, oh, you're not a smart one, though. She was talking about Trinity because she had told Trinity that when you mm -hmm. see the one, you'll fall in love with him. And so yes. you'll know he's the one by who you fall in love with. See? So the oracle says a lot of things. She freed Morpheus. And so she was saying a lot of things. Even when he first come in, she said, don't worry about the base. He says, what base? And then he knocks it over. She says, that one. He says, oh, you knew that? He said, yeah, I knew that. But he said, what's even deeper? Did, what if I wouldn't have told you? In other words, did, I, did you break it because I said you was going to break it? Or did you break it because I knew you was going to break it? Or what you know is only because of what I say. Is it, is it what I say that makes it what you know? See, she said a lot of codes. Yeah. See? So there's a whole lot of stuff. And we need that in transition. We need somebody that speaks to us in our uncertainties about what we need to be certain. You got to have certain times people can give you a word that meets you where you are. You're not all the way there. Like the, the, like the guy who prayed and said, Lord, help my unbelief. Not my belief, but my unbelief. That's right. See? So you need an oracle that can lead you to that. That's what my wife did to me. A whole lot of things I did not believe when I first met her. But she oh pointed God. me to where she knew I was going to go. I had gave up preaching. I had gave it up. She said, no, I see you preaching. I was like, no, you can't see me preaching. <laughs> and there was some well, things said, some that, that, that even in our life God was still working out but what she saw was absolutely true see and so you need that oracle and that's what she did so she plays a lot of, lot of that point pointing him towards the way and really helping him die to his unbelief by acknowledging it see what I'm saying because yeah. now he has to say I'm not the one you have to say you're not the one before you can know you are the one see mm -hmm. you, you, have, you have to realize how much you are entrenched before you'll get for freedom. You gotta realize how much you're in bondage to it. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so what she said was so key. And she knew he had to die. And so that's why when he dies, and you, if you look at it carefully, when it first come on, Trinity goes through a room, the numbers is 303. Yes, well, I got that. Right, at the end, he's in the room 303. Come on now. <laughs> See? I didn't and even so bring that up, but all these numbers on huh? there. What'd you say? <laughs> I said the things that you're talking about, I didn't even get to because I, I just dived into something else. But it's so funny because I know it's the Holy Ghost that's telling you to say it um, oh. because that's what he wants to reveal. Right. And um, people got to be more cognizant of what you're watching. What are you really looking at? I tell you, my spiritual eyes, whenever I'm watching a movie, no matter what the movie is, right. it's open because I want to right. know. I right. want to know. And it, it, it Yes, you can watch something and it can be entertaining, but make sure that you're spiritually aware. Right. Let me tell you something, right. and, and that's a whole nother thing. But I'm watching, I was watching a TV show. I don't know if you ever watched it or heard of it, called The Arrow. 
and and I'm, I don't know if you have you ever watched the Green Arrow? Yeah, I watched the couple, maybe about three episodes of it. I love those kind of movies. I love superhero movies. So it it's a part in that movie. Uh, not movie, but the TV show where, and yeah, like I said, TV. I love that show. I am in love right. with that show. Okay. And he slides something in, and if you didn't know what he was talking about, you just wouldn't know. He right. said, yeah, over there is a ley line over there. And I said, Ooh. you saying that in plain sight? <laughs> <laughs> On this TV show right now? <laughs> I was like, I'm done. Wow. They, they just reveal so much, and because it's in plain sight, and you don't know their language, you don't right. know the language of spiritual highways, so it right. would just go over your head. Right, exactly. And, and, and that's what exactly. I mean about this movie and this matrix. Right. And I thank God for God revealing so much to you that you can begin to. And I know that it's it, you gave him a lot to think about, a lot to marinate on, a lot to uh, chew on, because we've got to stop being so natural that we're not supernatural. Right, exactly. And exactly. um, I don't know if you have anything else you just want to add right. to that. Um, like I well, said, I want to pick up on that point, and then I want to finish that last point because you, you gave me two questions about yes. this scene, about the, or, the oracle, and then about the end of the movie. But I do want to pick up. That's the whole purpose of being supernatural is to be able to bring it down into the natural. So we we got to be watchmen on the wall. We you know, like I say, we sit in heavenly places. I mean, why God got us sitting up there if we're not we're not going to tell what we see? And so that's very key. And I I've, I've never watched movies for entertainment. Never. I mean, God didn't let me. My gift wouldn't let me. I can't help what I see, you know? Um, and so it's very key we do that because we know what God is speaking through us and to us, you know? And we also know what the world is trying to, the world is longing for God, just don't know how to get there. It's, yeah. it's so key that the world, the world embraced things that are mysterious more than the church did. That's a sad thing. To That's say. the problem. See, when, when revelation come to the church first, there's nowhere in the world. We should have made Matrix. We should have made Lucy. You Where are we? Huh? You really preaching right now? Yeah, real talk, real talk. We, I mean, who know more about the heavenly places than we do? Who knows about supernatural more than we do? That's the authority and access we have. Paul said, "I went to the third heaven." He said, "I saw things I couldn't utter." Well, can we utter them? That was Paul. We yeah. should another level. See what I'm saying? Is it? My wife said today that we are living in a time now that God has. What do you say, baby? What God is revealing? What God is revealed? What God has presented? He's now revealing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, what God is presenting, He's now revealing. It's time. To, it's time for us to be able to reveal these things because the enemy is rising. Anytime you can have something spiritual and wickedness, you ought to be a nervous. It says spiritual wickedness. Those two should never be together. How do you be spiritual and be wicked? See, mm -hmm. that's another realm. So where are we? So where are we to match that? Where are we to match that insight? Very key. But I want to get back to that part with Oracle is so powerful. You see, moves into that, but I want to get to the end. To me, the end, I love the end. I love the way, they, I love the whole movie, but the way they wrote it, because he had to die to Mr. Anderson. So he's in his last battle with the guy, uh, right before the, the train comes, the train comes, they battle, and he's starting to realize that in order for him to beat the, the, the enemy, it's not about his fighting skills. It's about his identity of knowing who he is. Yeah. So he gets on his back and is about to murder him, and the train is about to come. And he's, he hollers out, Mr. Anderson. And yes. for the first time, Neil says, no, my name is Neil. Mm. This <laughs> dies to himself. You have to die to yourself before you die. Jesus really died in the Garden of Gethsemane. If there's no death in your mind, there's no death in your life. And so you have to die to what's in your mind first. And so when you die to what's in your mind, and get, it's called Gilgal, the place of the skull, then you can die on, on Calvary with no problems because you already died to your will. And so when Mr. When, when, when Neil said, I am Neil, that's when his death had to come in the physical because he died mentally to Mr. Anderson. Yes. Then he goes and he gets shot, you see? And I love that part when he gets shot because then they show Morpheus. And Morpheus, I love Morpheus because Morpheus says, can't be, he's the one. Morpheus is seeing him from an eternal place, watching him die in a time place and pronounces that it can't be. That can't be true. Yes, he's the one. So Morpheus declares that can't, I don't matter what I see, can't be. Then Trinity realized her purpose from the oracle. This is the one I love. She's looking at her husband 
right there in front of her, even though he's dying in the Matrix, he's right in front of her, and love kisses him. Love always brings you back to your original purpose of Ooh. who you are. And, love. and when love kisses him, he returns no longer as Mr. Anderson, Tony as Neil. Now there is no fight with the enemy. Now he goes into the enemy, destroys Ooh. the enemy from within, nothing but light, and now, oh. and we'll talk about this next time we get together, part two, because now the enemy is free from the system, but he's still the enemy. Oh, <laughs> so we got to talk about what part two represents, because when he comes back, he don't have the ear piece in his ear anymore. He said, because right. something happened to me when you went inside of me yes. and me free. So I want to talk about that, but that's so important. <laughs> yeah, that, I'm so happy. We're leaving off with the cliffhanger. So I, I just want to thank you so much for you and your wife coming in and, and really and being an expression of God using uh, the same tools that, believe it or not, the enemy used. I want to say this before we leave, too, is that I'm pretty sure you probably know that The Matrix was written by someone else other than they wanted to portray. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> that right there blew me away when I, when I really yeah. started research. Yeah, they stole it. They, yeah, they stole, stole it. it like they yeah. always try to do from the people of God is right. that that was a stolen script, but she right. did get redeemed. She didn't get a lot of the recognition that she deserved. Right. But, she got um, some money for it though. Yeah. But she got yeah. the money. But I just want to put that out there too for people. When you begin to look at certain things, really do your homework. And right. God expects us to study to to show ourselves approved. And truly, man of God, that's what you have done and that's what you continue to do to do. And I look forward to us coming together again in another yeah. session talking about the matrix and perhaps even if God says we can really kind of expound on other films similar to that, that yeah. we can bring uh, more uh, revelation and, and really begin okay. to cause people wow. to wake up, right. to come out well, of I, slumber. I would love that. I would love that. I'm going to tell you my favorite movie. Out of all, I'll tell you what they are. Um, you ever seen Peaceful Warrior? I haven't. Oh, my God. I haven't. Oh, I'm gonna check that one out. Now you got He's for Warrior. Nick Nolte is in it. It's probably one of the most heaviest movies I ever saw in my life. Wow. It's extremely heavy. It's on the same line we're talking about. Peaceful Warrior. Uh, you say Sunset Limited? What is it called? Sunset Limited. No. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sunset I'm Limited. Out. Huh? I'm missing out. <laughs> that's, that's what. Uh, that's with um, uh, what's the guy um, Samuel Jackson and uh, Tommy Lee somebody. Uh, Tommy Lee Jones. Tommy Lee Jones. Okay. Yep. Samuel Jackson is a Christian. Tommy Lee Jones is an atheist. Tommy Lee Jones want to kill himself and kill himself. He want to jump at the train called the Sunset Limited. God shows God picks Samuel Jackson up, put him there, and let him catch him in the middle air. Takes him home, and they go back and forth for one hour, and they never leave his living room. Between God and being an atheist, it's the greatest battle you've ever seen. Wow! It's incredible. It's called the Sunset Limited. You gotta watch Peace for Warrior. You gotta watch Sunset Limited. And I know you've seen Lucy. Have you seen Lucy? That's the. Is that the one where they created her and she became? Uh, I'm trying to remember if that's the same movie. That's the lady who learned how to use. They put something in her. It busts loose. She 100 percent of her brain. Yeah. Morgan Freeman. Yes. I, I remember that movie. That that was really tremendous. That's um, that was amazing, and 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 that's something that I definitely want us to talk about, or any other movies that you okay. know God puts on your heart. Have you seen Collateral Beauty? That sounds familiar. That's Will Smith. Mm, that I'm movie. To... You you're gonna love that movie because it no, talks about know. things that you talked about. It talks about death. Time and something else, and they actually time is a person. You got to see it. It's heavy. I love I love the movies that deal with time. Yeah, well, you're gonna love Collateral Beauty. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're going we're going to we're going to do this again, Apostle. Uh, we're gonna you know again. I'll send out a post. I'll send out a, okay. a flyer for people to know that you're coming back with okay. a vengeance. <laughs> and I just want to thank God for you. Thank, Thank you, you, Sister Cassandra, if I'm saying her name, right. name yep. correctly. Um, <laughs> I appreciate you allowing you. Um, this to happen. And um, Prophet Summers, thank you so much for the uh, association and connection. Yeah, he connected us. 
Yeah. That was beautiful and very timely. But we're gonna we're gonna leave today, and but we don't want you to leave with this without this knowledge and revelation that you gotta begin to begin to see what God is doing in the earth realm. Right. And not just the earth realm, but the spirit realm in heaven right. and begin right. to see that there's many layers and that we got to catch up. We've got that's what the Bible says, that the kingdom of darkness are wiser. Why? Because right. they don't look at religion as religion. Right. They right. don't. And that's right. the problem is that we're looking. Our eyes are, are still closed, even though they're open. Right. And so, but I just want to thank you again thank with a you. great, a great, a great anointing on this. And thank you. God Thanks. bless you. And we'll Thank see you. Soon. Appreciate you. Keep us in prayer. Love you so much. Love you too. God bless you. Okay. God bye. Bye bye.